Long. Hi guys, it is another cold winter night. I'm pretty sure it is snowing outside right now. As we close out November of 2022, that would be a Wednesday night, November 30th, 2022. Counting down the hours till December. Don't even get me going, but uh, as many, <laughs> I think you guys have figured out by now where my uh, brain has been the past several days, and that is in this new uh, bottomless pit of doomer porn that I have fallen into over at this place called uh, medium.com, medium.com, where I have just been... Uh, like a Doomer kid in a Doomer candy store, just uh, ricocheting around, and I'm just finding all of these new Doomers. Never heard of them. And so, good Lord, I mean, it, it's hard to pick who the best might be, but I'm telling you, this guy, never heard of this fellow named Stephen Bull. Love that name, Stephen Bull. Never heard of this man. And uh, he writes a lot under the column Ecological Overshoot, where uh, on Medium.com, he has a pretty regular column called Today's Contemplation Collapse Cometh, with, and, you know, then they're numbered. And he also... Uh, Stephen also has an excellent website which I'm playing around with called olduvai.com is his website. And then he's got links to all of these other articles and videos and everything over there. But uh, so who is the mysterious Stephen Bull? I would, uh, Steve Bull, I guess, it's not Steven. Uh, if I if I ever do get my interviews cranked up again, we will be bringing Steve Bull onto the show. And this man only has 244 followers. You know, one of the most intelligent voices on this subject that I have found, 244. So come on, guys, let's show the guy some love. Steve describes himself as, quote, a guy trying to make sense of a complex and seemingly insane world. I spend my days pondering our various predicaments while practicing local food production. So uh, I think he lives out in California. Is Old Dubai in California, or is that in Africa? Anyway, so we're going to read, let's read two of his contemplations. This is his contemplation. We're going to go back to September 16th for this one, and I think you'll know why in a second. Today's contemplation is a short reflection on where I believe human energies should be focused as we stumble into an unknowable future in light of an article on the topic that was shared to one of the Facebook groups I am a member of via a compilation of related articles periodically distributed by The Collapse Chronicle. The Collapse... Other people have sent me this and asked me there is no connection uh, I am in no way, shape, or form connected to the Collapse Chronicle, uh, but he has a link to it, but uh, excellent website. I've never uh, talked to the folks over at Collapse Chronicle to see what that's all about. But anyway, take it away, Steve Bull. <clears throat> Peak Humanity would appear to have been a direct result of our leveraging of a one-time cache of ancient carbon energy that has afforded us the ability to expand our numbers and environmental impact 
for quite some time, but has unfortunately placed us firmly into ecological overshoot, a significant growth far beyond our environment's ability to support on a continuing basis our numbers and material demands. Virtually every species that enters such a predicament, you know, a predicament that we have entered now called ecological overshoot, virtually every species that enters the predicament of ecological overshoot experiences, experiences the collapse that inevitably follows once the fundamental resource that has allowed it to blast past its natural carrying capacity is exhausted. In the case of fossil fuels, it's about a declining energy return on energy invested and the hyper exploitation of the resources and others as well as an overloading of natural sinks via debt and credit expansion to reduce significantly its future availability. And he does all of the, this dot connecting between economic and ecological collapse. The guy, he, he's really uh, done his homework. This impending collapse, you know, the one we're heading right into, is problematic on a number of fronts. But I would contend that it is particularly so because of some very dangerous complexities we have created and distributed around the planet, placing our long-term future and that of many other all question mark species in great peril. Energy is everything to life and the surplus energy we garnered from our exploitation of fossil fuels has led to our hyper complex and globalized industrial society. Along the way, the vast majority of humans have lost the knowledge and skills to be self-sufficient and adapt to a life without fossil fuel energy and its long list of conveniences. Of particular note should be our dependence upon long distance supply chains for virtually all our most important needs. Food, potable water, and regional shelter materials. While relocalizing these necessary aspects of our existence should be a priority for every community that wishes to weather the coming transition to a post-carbon world, we should be considering quite seriously the safe decommissioning of some significantly dangerous creations. Three of the more problematic ones include nuclear power plants and their waste products, chemical production and storage facilities, and biosafety labs and their dangerous pathogens. The products and waste of these complex creations are not going to be contained when the energy to do so is no longer available and loss of this containment will create some hazardous conditions for human existence in their immediate surroundings at the very least. In fact, multiple nuclear facility meltdowns could potentially put the entire planet at risk for all species. As of today, some 400 38 nuclear reactors with another 56 
new nuclear reactors under construction are spread through 32 nation states. Finding the actual number of chemical production and storage facilities that exist is next to impossible, but a proxy of their existence can be imagined via their economics and global spread of the industry, and it is massive. As for biosafety labs, <clears throat> The total number is also virtually impossible to nail down due to the various levels assigned them, but as for those studying the most dangerous pathogens, currently 59 uh, bio labs are spread around the globe. These facilities, even with today's high energy inputs and safety protocols, have experienced catastrophic accidents, at least for the immediate environmental and ecological systems, residents of the area, and employees. From Chernobyl and Fukushima to Bhopal and Beirut, to numerous lab failures and accidental infections and deaths of bio lab employees, to say little of the recent possibility of corona panic having escaped from a lab, the dangers posed by them have periodically been quite obvious. As our surplus energy to minimize these danger falls, our ability to protect ourselves from them also declines, increasing the risk that they pose substantially. It seems only prudent to, dis to decommission and safely yeah, right, eliminate the dangers while we still have the energetic ability and resources to do so. There is little in our current thinking about this situation that leads me to believe we will address these potential catastrophes, however. In fact, I see significant hubris and denial on a daily basis as we surge headlong in the opposite direction, expanding on these complexities for the most part, rather than reducing them, to say little of our continuing pers pursuit of the infinite growth chalice on a finite planet. The fact that we seem to be doing the exact opposite of what seems prudent and forward thinking does not instill a lot of confidence in me for our long-term prospects. Our failure to address the potential lethal consequences primarily, it would seem, because our continuing belief that we can both predict and control complex systems, and because these pursuits further enrich the ruling elite, raises the stakes significantly for both current and future generations, as well as all other life on the planet. And uh, Steve Bull has a lot of bile for the ruling elite. Several of his contemplations are about that, so we're going to uh, look at his daily contemplation from, uh, let's see, this is November 9th. This is what was on his mind, speaking of uh, global elites. Uh, today's short piece is a comment I shared on an article by Nathan Surendron that highlights a debunking of the idea that energy can be decoupled from growth 
and thus reduce carbon emissions while supporting continued economic expansion. Nathan, Nathan Surendrop, who I haven't even opened up yet, has a number of great articles to read on our energy conundrum and related topics. If you're not familiar with Nathan's writing, I recommend it. Great piece, Nathan. I am increasingly coming to the conclusion that all such narratives that argue for the continuation of growth are readily accepted by most people since they are part and parcel of the denial and bargaining of the bio and geophysical limits of existence on a finite planet. More nefariously, these stories are simply marketing propaganda by the ruling caste and its sycophants and its how do you pronounce that word? Is it sycophants? Psychophants? You know, ass kissers to support their primary motivation. This is the primary motivation on the planet. The control and expansion of the wealth generation and extraction systems that provide their revenue streams and thus their positions of power and prestige. Everything, and I mean everything, is leveraged to meet this overarching goal. And I'm just going to break in here that this is the reason whenever I hear these clueless morons talking about these uh, global elites having a depopulation agenda to kill us all. It, it, it is absolutely patently absurd as the global elites are 100% dependent. Their entire everything is 100% dependent on a, you know, a never-ending growth in population and consumption, you, you know, to keep the, to keep the engine going. 100% uh, uh, dependent on more people eating more stuff meaning killing the planet. For example, the idea that a massive transition to green, clean energy and related industrial products and processes that are marketed as net zero and carbon free can alter our climate tra trajectory completely overlooks the significant ecological damages that such a shift would entail. That the ruling elite has created an Overton window such that most people buy into this tale and cannot think outside the box created is not surprising. Carbon is our enemy and can be overcome via carbon-free thinking and products. Anyone who points out the flaws in this narrative are climate change deniers or shills for the fossil fuel industry. Yes, nowhere in the discussion is a realization that the knock-on effects of the significant industrial processes that are involved or necessary to transition away from fossil fuels are problematic in the extreme or that land system changes. Land system changes created 
the cause of our constant expansion are detrimental to our hydrological systems and thus creating the extreme weather events we are experiencing perhaps even more so than climate change. I think maybe we have found the identity of Book Hermit. Book Hermit is your name Steve Bull. So Steve Bull, you know, talking about uh, that habitat destruction, which is another way of saying uh, land changes. Uh, the knock-on effects, you know, from all of this habitat destruction are uh, messing with all of these other planetary cycles every bit as much or more than climate change caused by uh, fossil fuel extraction. And of course, the, uh, the uptick in mining and all of the rest of it, uh, how many, just how many acres of land are going to have to be destroyed for this clean, green energy transition. <clears throat> that land system changes, or I would call habitat destruction changes, are having a significant impact on our weather patterns, cannot be considered at all, since the idea that we need to stop altering the landscape of our world runs in a diametrically opposed way from the expansion and growth of our human experiment. And this, of course, undermines the ruling caste power base. Better to leverage crises in a way that allows status quo power and wealth structures to be maintained and expanded just as the idea of decoupling does. The growth imperative must be maintained at all cost and perhaps as importantly the belief that it can be maintained must be adhered to by the significant majority of the population or at least passively accepted so that there is little to no rejection of it and thus counter narratives to it. For despite the seeming strength of the concept that infinite growth on a finite planet is entirely possible because of technology and human ingenuity, if a tipping point of the populace comes to understand that our pursuit of growth is what has destroyed vast portions of our planet and other species, leading us deeply into ecological overshoot and subsequently rejects its pursuit, then the entire foundation of the ruling elite crumbles. And we cannot have that! Better to double or triple down on the propaganda and censor and ostracize counter-narratives, can you say, bright green lies, thus allowing the game to go on just a little bit longer. Yes, sir. Thank you, Steve Bull, for uh, your subversive uh, <laughs> commentary about those global elites. Their entire everything, the entire narrative is based on infinite growth on a finite planet that has already taken us in to ecological overshoot. There is only one place for a species who is in ecological overshoot, otherwise known as the plague phase, uh, to go.
and that's exactly where we're going to uh, where we're heading and the global elites are going to go right on uh, with their bright green lies uh, about all of, the, all of this crap right up uh, and, until we smack into uh, the wall the brick wall called the limits to growth. This this is it's open and shut. It's the biggest story uh, on the planet. And Steve Bull has 244 followers. And I'm sure if you instead of searching ecological overshoot, if you plugged in uh, Kim Kardashian. Uh, you would see a hell of a lot more than 244 followers. Anyway, uh, olduvai, O-L-D-U-V-A-I dot com. I highly suggest you get over there and uh, check it out. And so, uh, and I would make a smart comment right now, but I will just somehow hit the edit button. I have to go overshoot a margarita. Bye, guys. You like my new Fauci shirt?